My son was um, uh, started kindergarten, and uh, he was my oldest child, and, and uh, came home the first day and he had homework. I said, "You got homework?" And I thought, "What a mean teacher!" The first day in kindergarten, he's got homework. He goes, "So what do you got to do?" And he goes, well, "I got to do a craft with you and mom." I got to get you got to do a craft. He goes, "Yeah." But what kind of a craft? Anything we want. And his teacher was brilliant because she made homework a family event. And the next thing we were doing is we were reading books together as homework. We had to read a book to my, my kid and my daughters came along and did the same thing with them. But my mother passed away already and so I thought, well, we'll go to the library and we'll check out a book, uh, book on Native American crafts and we'll make dream catchers. I don't know if anybody's familiar with dream catchers or not, but it's kind of a neat little thing. And, and we're telling the story of the dream catchers and a little bit about his Native American culture, our Native American culture. Uh, because this is the United States of Native America. We are here. It's our culture. We're all family. I love to play in places like this because I get to meet all my brothers and sisters and my children and my grandchildren because we're all family. And the flute kind of cleared up an awful lot of that. At the end of the flute is a circle like there's a sacred hoop Native Americans have, and that's life. No beginning, no end. These little girls, they're with their mother. We think about their children and their grandchildren. And we take care of the earth for them, the air and the water, because we're Americans, and that's what we do. These folks, you folks out here in rural America, that's what you've done for since forever. Since your ancestors came from Europe, they took care of the land and the earth and the water. And all the people inside that circular family there's a line up and down the good road. That's, that was I-80 the day bringing me from Omaha here. And there's a line across. It's a hard road. It's a challenges in life. And that's like losing my wife and my parents, losing your spouses and your parents. And so where they meet in the center is where they look for the Creator. So when the Christians start bringing them with Christianity, they go, we understand that cross. We have that cross. And that circle cut in four pieces, one circle, part of that circle was red before Columbus ever came here before anybody else had ever come here. One part of that circle was red for the Native Americans, but also for the blood of our ancestors. And recognizing the fact that people work very hard to give us what we have. And one part of that circle was black for the Africans. Before they started bringing slaves to this country, the Native Americans knew that they had family that were black. But also for the night, because we all need to rest Especially after listening to some guy play the flute, they'll put you to sleep and stuff, you know. But one part of that circle was yellow for the Asians, but also for the light that we all need. Because we need those, that light for ourselves, and that light to grow our, our food. We all need that we're dependent on that light. And one fourth, the other fourth of that circle was white for the Europeans for our ancestors, but it's also for the children and the grandchildren, the purity of them, and they're our future. And that told us that we're all family, and, and so it's brought me to understand those things. In that circle, my wife, my parents are still with me. My grandson that was just born two months ago, he's always been with me. And his little brothers and sisters that aren't born yet. They've always been with me, and it's my duty to take care of them. So we have this flute that reminds us of that, because just simply because of the circle on the end. That circle has got nothing in there. Uh, the, the stick is hollowed out. Originally it was hollowed out by termites and wood roaches and carpenter ants eating, eating the wood, and woodpeckers poke holes in the branch and suck out the termites and the wood, and the wood roaches and ants and stuff. And the wind blew through the trees, and some young man heard that, and he saw that branch and figured out how to make a flute so though we learn from woodpeckers and from carpenter ants and from termites everything in nature teaches us things so we got to remember we've got to keep teaching things but the first time the, the young man took that branch and he put his wind into it because he wanted to he wanted to make that song he blew too hard and it sounded it sounded awful but then when he softened his breath,
sounded beautiful and you realize that people wanted to hear that. And you realize that when I keep my voice soft and talk to people, they'll listen. Even when I'm wrong, they'll listen. And they'll respect me. And if I'm wrong, they'll help me. But when I raise my voice, I forget. And people don't want to hear that. They won't respect me. They won't listen. But since we're all family, when I keep my voice soft, one of the things I remember is that we're all family. And if we're all family, I love everybody here. And I love everybody out there. But when I raise my voice in anger, I forget that I love you. And then things kind of go to heck. And people don't listen. So the flute reminds us to keep our voice soft and we'll be able to work things out. And sometimes we'll, you know, not everybody's going to agree with me on everything. My wife didn't agree with me on everything. Those little differences are okay. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be a little peculiar once in a while. It doesn't mean we have to get angry. It's okay to go to a different church. It's okay to vote, belong to a different political party. It's okay to have ancestors from a different part of the world. Those are okay. If we keep our voice soft, we'll be able to work out those things. So when you hear the flute, remember those things. Just remember it's okay. And remember, I love you. And remember, remind me if I get angry to keep my voice soft. People will forget that. Except, if you're at a game, sometimes the refs have trouble hearing and you have to raise your voice. Guys, you can, you can yell at them. But other than that, that's, that's it, okay? Tonight at the football, you know, when you're watching TV, sometimes the refs are a thousand miles away. You really got to raise your voice and yell at the TV and stuff. But, but for you know, for people, you know, for your your children, your spouse, your neighbor, just keep your voice soft. 